If you see this plant in your backyard, don't step on it. This neglected plant is more delicious and nutritious than most garden plants people care for. If you pull out this weed to protect your crops, you throw away something much more valuable. Calorie for calorie, purslane is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on Earth. It also has the highest concentration of omega-3s compared to any leafy green vegetable. On top of that, you can take advantage of its anti-inflammatory properties by turning it into a poultice. This is just one of the many neglected plants that might be growing in your backyard. Plants that not only can save your life one day, but that you can put to good use right now. If you know these wild plants, you will never run out of food, no matter what the future brings you. Today, I would like to show you some of the ignored plants that every person should know. So pay close attention, as one day you may need one of them. During the Great Depression, it was plants like these that fed many Americans, saving countless lives from starvation. Unfortunately, this knowledge of wild foods and medicinal plants was almost lost to history. Very few people still know how to work with these neglected weeds or how to identify them. These wild foods are much healthier. They are not genetically modified and they don't have pesticides. They don't need any care or maintenance. They are everywhere and they are free to grab. They also have hidden medicinal properties and you can use them to create potent remedies for you and your family. It's funny how we can instantly recognize hundreds of foods that are not very good for us, but we walk by so many potentially life-saving plants every day, not knowing a thing about them. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Apellian. I'm a biologist, herbalist, and I've studied wild plants and natural remedies for over 20 years. I've gained key survival and foraging skills during the years I've spent living with one of the oldest cultures on Earth, the San Bushmen. The hunter-gatherer San live completely off the land. Their name literally means picking up from the ground, or what we call foraging. Food gathering and harvesting medicines is a way of life I've adopted for my personal wellness after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I found that nature's medicine was more effective than the standard treatment I was prescribed. I went from being pushed around in a wheelchair to taking back full control over my life and being able to properly care for my children. Things got so much better that in 2015, I went on the History Channel series alone. There I survived in the wild for 57 days, completely alone, mostly by foraging wild foods and medicine. This is the type of knowledge your grandparents probably knew by heart. This knowledge that saved hundreds of thousands of Americans in times of crisis, like the Great Depression. Things deteriorated so quickly, people didn't even know what hit them. Nearly half the working population became unemployed. Towns began to fill up with hungry, desperate people, and many starved in their homes. Children were sent away to orphanages since parents couldn't feed them anymore. Caring, loving families, like mine or yours, were torn apart by shortages and famine. But it was the seniors that were hit particularly hard. Those who were retired or close to retirement watched their savings disappear. Nobody would hire them, and many of them ended up on the streets begging for bread. Seniors became a burden to most families. Many were forced out of their homes and even sent to poorhouses. And yet, the Great Depression didn't turn into a widespread famine. Very few people, if any, died of starvation. As the government was overwhelmed and unable to cope with the magnitude of the crisis, our salvation came from backyards and backlands, especially the nutritious weeds that I'm going to show you today. Help is growing all around us. After you learn this skill, walking in nature is like shopping in an all-free supermarket. During the Great Depression, this very weed was collected in bathtubs. People washed it and prepared it for canning. It's found essentially everywhere in North America for most of the year. Some even consider it an invasive superweed. It thrives between garden plants, near streams, in forest clearings, abandoned lots. This plant is literally everywhere, and it's free. It rivals kale and spinach in nutritional value, and it's an excellent source of protein, fiber, and much needed iron. Isn't it a shame that lamb's quarters mostly ended up in the compost heats instead of on our family's plates? Weeds like garlic mustard, chickweed, purslane, wood sorrel, and curly dock were cooked and eaten. They are equally, if not significantly, more delicious than the garden plants we put on our plates. People didn't look down on weeds. They looked down and saw breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Unfortunately, this kind of knowledge isn't passed down anymore. They should teach this in schools because one day it could very well save our lives again. If tomorrow you find yourself just like our grandparents, with no savings, no income, and all that's left is the food in your fridge, your pantry, and your cupboards, how will you survive the next four years? This is how fast a crisis happens, and this is how long it might last. The greatest mistake we can make today is to take our lives for granted. There is no reason why you shouldn't have a backup plan just in case things go south. No matter how many food reserves you might have, they will eventually run out. We've seen empty shelves before, and it wasn't even a crisis. We've seen people trample each other over deals on a flat screen TV. Imagine what they'll do if food runs out. It's my belief that if we get into this situation, it's the good old wild plants that will save us, just like they saved our grandparents. The only problem is that we don't really know them anymore. These neglected wild foods aren't just a safety net for bad times. They can be a way of life. They certainly became a big part of mine. When I turned 30, my disease put my life on hold. It put me in a wheelchair by day and left me bedridden by night. All I got from my doctor was a diagnosis and a standard treatment for multiple sclerosis that didn't improve a thing. The pains were incredibly sharp and I felt burns all over my body and I felt like this constantly. I tried everything. What I came to realize over the years that followed is that for me, the medicinal plants were much more effective in managing my condition than anything else I've tried. They work so well for me that I can do anything I want. I don't have pains anymore, and nobody would even notice that I have MS. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people out there not taking advantage of the medicinal power of plants. If you haven't yet tried a natural remedy for something that ails you, you probably should, as you might just be suffering needlessly, just like I did. There's no good reason why you shouldn't take advantage of the medicinal properties of the wild edibles growing around your house. It doesn't matter if you are young or old, it's never too early or too late to start using a new useful skill. Even if the plants don't have medicinal properties, they're still healthy for your body. Instead of paying three or four times more for organic products at the supermarket, you can pick them up from the ground for free, as all wild plants are organic. There's no pesticides, herbicides, GMOs, or synthetic fertilizers. We became so dependent on supermarkets and pharmacies, we forgot how infinitely more valuable the free-growing plants are. They're probably the healthiest foods that you can add to your dinner plate, and most of them are absolutely delicious. These neglected plants can be dried, canned, tinctured, frozen, pickled, fermented, or powdered, so you can take advantage of them even in the winter. Plus, there are very few things in life more gratifying and fulfilling than walking without cares in nature. Your mind is far from the daily stress, looking for the next plant that you'll pick. Foraging is both practical and relaxing, and it surely benefits both your mind and body, providing a much needed but profitable escape. Most of these plants are easy to find as they grow all over the place. They're easy to prepare and easy to identify. Easy as it might be, in order to take advantage of them, you still need to have this knowledge to know them. Drop us in the middle of a grocery store and within minutes our carts will be stuffed with second-rate foods and produce filled with antibiotics or pesticides. Drop us in a field with plants that can save our life and we'll be lost. We rely exclusively on what grocery stores and pharmacies have to offer. Not only that, our bodies are hooked on preservatives used to extend shelf lives of products, all while completely snubbing the superior natural bounty that is literally within our reach. It saddens me to realize how many people will go through what I went through without knowing that the most effective remedy could be growing near their home as we speak and not laying on a shelf in a pharmacy. This is the type of knowledge that is lost when you depend on supply chains. The plant knowledge is no longer taught as it has been for thousands of generations before us. If we don't do something about it, this knowledge may be lost forever, and one day we might pay the ultimate price for this. When you were growing up, it was probably your parents or grandparents that helped you identify your very first fairy. This is something only you can pass down to your kids and grandkids, as they don't learn these skills from TV, gadgets, or schools. You're showing future generations that whatever might happen, 
they won't be the ones waiting in line for the government to throw them a bone. You're showing them how to be self-reliant, which is probably the most important thing you can teach someone. This is what I like to call my wild knowledge. This is how I saved myself, how I treat myself, and what I choose to eat many times. You know that saying, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day, teach a man to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime? So today, I would like to pass on this knowledge to you. I want you to take advantage of the healthy, delicious foods around us. I want you to use the medicine growing near your home and to become more self-reliant and less dependent on stores, especially when times are hard. This is why I've gathered and published all this knowledge so every person can reap the benefits. It's very important to have this information in printed form, as you'll be able to access it whenever and wherever you are, from your favorite armchair in the living room to a secluded opening in a remote forest. I call it the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, the North American edition. Inside, you'll discover the 400 plants that never made it to most people's lives, kitchens, or medicine cabinets. The most important thing that I would like to show you, and that many books lack, is how to correctly identify these plants. I went through great lengths to print this book in color with huge pictures like this one for each plant to make it easy to identify. I also added extra photos of the defining features of the plant so that you will know exactly what to look for to make the correct identification. Because I want you to be 110% safe and make sure you've got the right plant, I added a poisonous look-alike section for each plant explaining the differences you should look for. With the distribution map I added, you'll also be able to search only for plants growing in your area. Each plant that has medicinal properties also has a section on how to use it as a remedy. You will also find instructions on how to prepare the wild foods for several purposes, how and when to harvest, depending on the season, and a few delicious time-tested recipes to prepare these wild foods like a seasoned forager. Here are just some of the things you'll find inside the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods. You'll discover a plant that you can pop, just like popcorn. The only difference is that it tastes better with a nutty flavor and it's gluten-free. This plant is pretty common all over America and I think you've seen it many times before. Young leaves can be picked in early spring or used raw in salads or cooked. They taste like spinach. They're best harvested early in the day and plunged into cold, salted water for 15 minutes. But the true power of this plant lies in its seeds. They are very tiny, the size of sesame seeds, and you should pot them as they taste better than popcorn. Just place them in a tall pot and let the magic begin. I think you'll love it. I'll also show you the plants and fruits that you would better forage in winter. Rose hips, for example, are a million times more delicious after the first frost, when they become creamy and sweet. Another plant you'll discover is what herbalists refer to as nature's Prozac. This instant anxiety-relieving plant could be growing near your house, no matter where you live in America. Steeping one teaspoon of clean, fresh leaves in a cup of boiling water for 10 minutes can also help you fall asleep faster. Please don't drink this tea if you plan on driving in the next six hours. I'll also show you why cattails are literally all you need to survive. Survivalists call this plant the supermarket of the swamp because you can eat every part of it, even its pollen. Cattails are a tactical, four-season food that can save your life and keep you strong even in the darkest times. You'll find out how to identify and take advantage of the American hog peanut. This common plant has the interesting ability to produce two types of flowers and two types of seeds at the same time. The lower, usually underground pods, contain a very large single seed that tastes like peanuts and can be eaten raw. The upper pods contain numerous smaller seeds that taste like garden beans and need to be cooked. So how would you feel if one day there wouldn't be any more food left to buy, but you could still come back home to your family with a pile of these treats? I'll also show you the fast-growing succulent red plant that resembles and tastes like bacon when cooked. You'll also discover a nut that was a mainstay in the grocer 100 years ago, but people can barely recognize them nowadays. American beech nuts are sweet and taste best after the first hard frost of autumn. You can separate the burrs by hand and dry the nuts in the sun. The shells can be cracked in the oven and then eaten. Our ancestors also boiled them to skim off their oil for cooking and to light lamps. I'll also show you how to make what I like to call healthy Pringles. 
The leaves of this plant have the unique ability to be turned into tasty, crispy, finger-licking chips. You'll discover a distinctive but a common mushroom that grows in all 50 states. This mushroom is called the morel, and it's worth around $50 a pound and could even go as high as $200 a pound in dried form on Amazon and eBay. There are no similar look-alikes, but just to be double sure you've got the right one, slice it in two. If it is hollow from top to bottom on the inside, they are morels. Nutty, woodsy, and fragrant, these mushrooms can be dried and reconstituted later by soaking them in water. If I were to recommend you a plant or mushroom to forage for profit, this would be it, as it's expensive and in huge demand. I'll also show you what to do if you find this odd berry that's very high in natural pectin and how to use it for preserves and jams, keeping your desired consistency while decreasing the sugar you need to use. The next time you pass by this pain-killing plant, stop and do this. Take a stalk or two and tear it in two. The plant secretes a milky white substance that resembles the one in opium poppy. The substance is known as lacticarium and it has much milder effects, but it's completely legal to forage, grow, and eat. You can collect its sap for a pain-killing elixir to have around whenever you have a lingering pain that just won't go away. I'll also show you where to best tap the big leaf maple or sugar maple tree to get the maximum yield out of your sap. Indigenous populations boiled maple sap into sugar using hot stones, but of course it's much easier to use your stove or oven. It takes 40 parts sap to produce one part syrup. Boil the sap to evaporate the water content and then use a coffee filter to remove the sediments and you're left with a wonderful natural sweetener filled with antioxidants. You'll also discover a plant called lamb's quarters. This Great Depression weed saved large communities from starvation and malnutrition. Growing all over the U.S., this superweed is also called wild spinach and it contains substantially more nutrients than cultivated spinach and kale. Well, if hard times ever come again, wouldn't you prefer to have this information on hand? I'll also show you how to make a fruity elderflower remedy to reduce inflammation in the body and to regulate bowel movement. You'll also discover how to recognize reishi, the mushroom that got me out of the wheelchair. Every day since that day, 20 years ago, I take, along with other remedies, a tincture that I make from this mushroom. Alongside my remedies, it helps a lot with my MS and I gladly recommend it as a medicinal mushroom for autoimmune conditions and other chronic issues. I'll also show you how to make a crispy crust wild dandelion bread. So if dandelions grow somewhere near you, go ahead and put them to good use. Just imagine when you open up the oven and fill your home with the smell of fresh baked bread with a subtle, sweet dandelion flavor. You'll also discover what to do if you find the common lake and swamp plant, American Lotus. The most delicious part is its arm-long roots that taste like sweet potatoes, but has holes in it. Its chestnut-flavored seed, also known as alligator corn, are ground into flour or can be pressed for extracting oil. I'll also show you what to do immediately after identifying colt's foot. This plant holds the secret to unblocking your airways and fighting colds, the flu, and unstoppable coughs. In fact, its Latin name is tussilago, which means to act on cough. I'll also show you something truly extraordinary, a seaweed that grows almost faster than you can eat it. If you look at it for some time, you can actually see it grow. This is one of the treats I ate on the Alone Show on Vancouver Island. So next time you find this plant washed up on the beaches, open your new book and find out what to do with it. I'll also expose the delicious secret this common plant holds, hidden from sight. If you pull up this invasive weed, you can find its secret the nut-shaped edible tubers that taste somewhere between almonds and hazelnuts. Foragers call them earth almonds. They can be eaten right out of the ground, or you can dry them for later use. When your friends ask you what these delicious treats are, I'm pretty sure they'll be blown away when you show them this common weed. I'll also show you how to use yarrow leaves as one of nature's most effective band-aids. Simply chew and apply it directly to the wound for two to three minutes. This instant field poultice helps prevent the infection of the wound and stops the bleeding. I'll also show the berry that is illegal to grow in some states, but perfectly fine to forage for. If you find a single gooseberry bush, you can gather around 12 pounds of gooseberries and you can return year after year to take advantage of it. You'll also uncover a wild plant that is sweeter than sugar and helps people with diabetes. 
Its sweetness comes from a compound found in the roots, with a taste similar to sugar, but less instant and more long-lasting. In the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, you'll also find other sugar substitutes that are okay to eat, especially if you have diabetes. I'll also show you the most sought out dish at Nature's Restaurant, together with over 50 edible berries that you'll find inside the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods. You'll also discover what you should do immediately when you find an alligator tree. It's very easy to identify as the bark perfectly mimics an alligator skin. The Zuni tribe steamed its berries and turned it into something that should find its way onto your dinner plate. I'll show you how to find the mini watermelons in the wild. The watermelon berry provides instant refreshment while quenching thirst and giving your body a fistful of vitamins. Did I mention that it tastes like watermelon? I'll also show you the common, but usually unpopular, pond-dwelling microplant that can save your life one day. This is the world's smallest flowering plant, almost half the size of a grain of rice. But while it might be teeny tiny, it contains all the essential amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, rivaling animal protein. It tastes like sweet cabbage and can be cooked just like it. This is just a tiny, small glimpse of what you'll find in the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods. Really, there's too much to say here. There are over 400 plants you'll find in this book. But that's not all. If you get the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods today, you'll also take advantage of a time-limited offer of three exclusive gifts that will be off the table soon. First, you'll get the Wilderness Survival Guide. In it, you'll find the survival skills that can help you craft resources from your surroundings in the great outdoors. This gift can help take your self-reliant skills to the next level. It also serves as a great bug out resource you wanna have by your side in times of need or when you go out foraging. The second exclusive bonus you'll receive is called Household Remedies, how to recover naturally at home. In it, you'll discover our grandparents' remedies that can still be used today with great results. From making a black radish cot syrup to vinegar socks, you'll find a home remedy for most common ailments. With this gift, you could try all these time-tested remedies from the comfort of your own home. The third bonus you'll get is 104 long-lasting foods you can make at home. In it, you'll discover the long-lasting foods from a time when there was no electricity or refrigerators. These foods are a great addition to anybody's pantry or stockpile, as in times of need, they will not spoil and will save lives. So if you choose to place the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods on your bookshelf, you'll also get these exclusive bonuses that are worth $27 each for free and unlimited access to the members area, including 24 seven support. Just think how much money you spend every year on foods that actually does you more harm than good, while free, ultra nutritious super weeds are growing near your home. The average American spends $2,792 on food each year every year. This book gives you access to an endless, free, healthy supply of food that can also be your lifeline in a crisis. By comparison, a year's emergency supply of food for one person costs at least $3,000. That's a lot of money to spend all at once. And if you have an emergency and you have to evacuate, you will leave your supplies behind. That's not the case with this book, as you can take it with you in your bag everywhere you want. I wanted everyone to be able to afford it and take advantage of the plants growing around them. At the same time, this book isn't cheap to make. It's filled with high resolution, full color, full page pictures that require a lot of quality ink and cutting edge printers. This is why we were able to afford it only in a limited edition. So today, you can get The Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, The Wilderness Survival Guide, Household Remedies, How to Recover Naturally at Home, and 104 long-lasting foods you can make at home. But not for $128, but for a one-time payment of just $37. If you think about it, $37 is just a single meal in a not-so-fancy restaurant. While with the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, you can put food and medicine on your table for a lifetime. The only way to take advantage of this unique offer is to add the Add to Cart button below now. I strongly believe that learning to look after yourself with the help of what nature gives freely is the ultimate form of self-reliance and the best thing you can do for your health. You will also be covered by my Keep the Book Money Back Guarantee. You have a full 60 days to try the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods. If at any time during those 60 days you are not completely satisfied with the results, send us an email or a message and we will refund you the price of the book. 
It's as simple as that. You can choose to keep the physical book, even if we refund you the $37. <laughs> yeah, you heard it right. This is my keep the book money back guarantee. If you've made it this far in the video, that means for me that you're interested in wild foods. I want to help you out on this path. My knowledge took decades to acquire, and it ended up not only saving my life, but enriching it. Sharing this knowledge means the world to me, as it would probably help others avoid unnecessary struggles. You cannot lose money with this investment, and in the long run, I'm pretty sure that the value of what you forage will be worth many times the money you invest in this book today. In addition, this book is also a food insurance policy for hard times. Indeed, I think every person should have this book in their home, next to their emergency foods or in their bug out bag. Even people who are not planning on using this book on a regular basis should have it on their bookshelf to help them put food on the table in case hard times are coming ahead. This knowledge is better at your fingertips now, as you might not be able to get it during a crisis or a blackout. If even toilet paper flies off the shelves from day one, what do you think will happen with books like this in a famine? This book is probably the most important thing you want to have by your side when you go out foraging, no matter if you're a seasoned forager or a novice. There may be times when you're still not sure about a certain plant and you'll need to consult the book, despite your vast experience. Or maybe you don't have experience at all and just want to find wild goodies using the book. Haven't you ever bumped into a mushroom, fruit, or plant and wondered if it's edible or not and what to do with it? I created this book with lots of pictures and identification guidelines, so no one should have second thoughts whether or not they have the right plant. How would you feel to come back after a foraging day with baskets of all sorts of treats picked from Mother Nature's restaurant? In my case, I use my foraging bounty to make my own remedies. For example, I prepare three tinctures that I've taken every day for the past 15 years to help keep my multiple sclerosis under control. Inside the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, you'll find lots of medicinal plants, including the ones I use regularly, and instructions on how to take advantage of them. So how would you feel about making your own medicine from plants growing around you instead of relying on chemical compounds found in pills? Some of my foraging bounty goes into my dishes, including the ones that I mentioned already in this video. Mushrooms, thistle stew are a staple food in my family. I did my best to raise my children, providing as much non-GMO, no pesticide food as possible. This is why a few times a week, we eat foods that grow in the wild, just like our forefathers did. There are very nutritious and full of antioxidants and vitamins that help our bodies in the long run. A lot of foods you find in the supermarkets, even overpriced foods that are labeled as organic, are nothing compared to the ones that grow in the wild. If you didn't know already, products sold as organic are allowed to be genetically modified, so long as there are no kinds of man-made pesticides or chemical fertilizers involved in the growing process. So really, there's absolutely nothing you can buy in supermarkets that comes close to the plants you can pick yourself from the wild. And comparing these overpriced organic foods, the wild foods are completely free and up for grabs. Over the year, I think I've saved tens of thousands of dollars that I normally would have spent on supermarket foods. There's no good reason why you shouldn't do the same. Start saving money and years of your life by taking advantage of the wild foods growing around you. The Forager's Guide to Wild Foods is a very important piece of knowledge we need to pass on to our loved ones, our children, and our grandchildren. This knowledge is scattered and hard to find in verified sources. This book is not available in stores and can be purchased only from the website at this moment. It was printed in limited edition, so I can only promise you this offer is available as long as we have printed books. If we don't have any more books left, you'll be notified when you click on the buy button. But if we have at least a book left for you, you'll be taken to the checkout page that looks like this. This checkout page is fully encrypted and has the highest levels of security. As another measure of protection, our payment processor uses three important antivirus and security programs on their checkout page, Norton, Symantec, and VeriSign Secure. If you choose to delve into the treasures of wild foods and medicine, you'll get the limited edition, The Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, Edible Plants, Lichens, Mushrooms, and Seaweeds, the North American edition. You'll also get the Wilderness Survival Guide, the 104 long-lasting foods you can make at home, household remedies, and the benefit of our 60-day Keep the Book Money Back Guarantee for a one-time payment of not $128, 
but only $37. I've learned a big part of my wild knowledge that I practice and teach today from the San Bushman tribes. It's only natural to give back to the amazing people that have shared their ways and wisdom with me and the world. Their way of life is under threat as they are being evicted from their lands to make room for more profitable businesses. So, by purchasing this practical book, you also help a good cause. 5% of everything I earn from selling this book goes to The Origins Project, a nonprofit foundation that helps them sustain and preserve a way of life closely linked with nature that the modern world has forgotten a long time ago and is struggling to bring back. As long as you have the curiosity to see what's growing around you, you don't need any magical powers or some special abilities to start on this path. And as I said before, it's never too early or too late to start learning a new useful skill. I also think this book is great no matter how well off you are or how tight your budget is. It's obvious you can save a lot more money than the price of this book, even in a single forage run. With the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, you can put food and medicine on your table for life. It's never a bad decision to invest in yourself. You're not just purchasing a book, you're investing in a skill that you will have for the rest of your life. You're acquiring a knowledge that is a good investment for financial, health, and safety reasons. If you think you don't have enough time to forage, then don't go deep into the wilderness to find your next nutritious meal or free painkiller. The most sought out plants in this book are weeds and grow just around the corner. The way I see it, you have three choices now. Continue your life in the same way without taking advantage of the nutritious, healthy, free wild foods growing around you, which can also save you in a crisis. Maybe a crisis won't even happen in our lifetime. But I like to rely on myself and to know what to do no matter what happens around us. I say, better safe than sorry. I also believe that knowledge is power and ignorance is anything but bliss. The second choice is to start this journey alone, fishing for information and trying everything for yourself. Unfortunately, it's very hard to find reliable information online. Now everyone has a blog and everyone thinks they're an expert. Very few people have actually walked the walk. I did that many times over, including on The Alone Show, where I proved and applied my knowledge on wild foods by surviving on them for 57 days. I've studied plants for over 20 years now, first starting off as a biologist. I practice what I preach. Sadly, I have seen many not so good and, and even harmful and sometimes deadly advice provided on a lot of so-called plant blogs. Plus, I think it's better to have this information in a physical format so you can take it with you everywhere you go. Third choice would be to have this book by your side. Think of it as a cheat sheet for faster results. I would have immensely benefited to have had a book like this back when I started foraging for my meals and medicine. It would have made my life so much easier and would have saved me money and time spent on research. As this knowledge literally saved me from years of pain, uncertainty, and unsuccessful treatments, I'm pretty sure that it can do the same for you and other people in need. With this knowledge by your side, you'll never see your backyard the same way again, nor the nearby forest or the fields around your home. The knowledge you get from this book can start a new, wonderful chapter in your life. So in order to start your journey on the path of wild foods with me, click on the button below this video, get your copy of The Forager's Guide to Wild Foods, and I'll see you in the members area. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I wish you all the best.